Welcome to Writers Are the Best Weirdos, the podcast starring me, Julia Roberts. I am a creativity coach, speaker, writer, and a weirdo. <laughs> Aren't you? We're going to answer a lot of questions about pubbing and promoting and marketing your books, so stay tuned. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I am here with David Brawler of Brawler Books, and before we talk to him, I'm just going to dip over to his bio so we know who we're talking to. David is a CEO, publisher, and author, and he um, has collaborated and worked with more than 500 authors on more than 600 titles in 10 countries around the world. He founded his company, Brawler Books, in 2015 with the mission of helping authors, organizations, and executives tell their stories and turn their expertise into published books. I know he also does memoirs, children's books, and novels. So let's talk a little bit to David. Hey. Welcome. Thanks for being thank here. You. Oh, thank you. Yeah. David and I know each other just from writers' conferences and running into each other in the halls and things of that <laughs> nature. So um, I actually have a lot of questions for him because I don't personally know much about a hybrid publisher, which is what Brawler Books is. That's what you would call yourself? A hybrid? Absolutely. That's correct. Okay. okay. So tell us what is a hybrid publisher for Star Sure. A hybrid, if you think of the continuum of publishing, you've got self-publishing and DIY on one end. Mm-hmm. And you've got traditional, the big five on the other end. Hybrid mm-hmm. is in the middle. Now, and- the big five is like the Penguin Random House. or you right. know, But there are a lot of little independent publishers, right? Before, Who are also, smaller than that, Penguin, yeah. but still bigger than us. That's correct. Absolutely. But also considered traditional, like an agent sells yes. it to them or university Absolutely. presses. So you're different from them. Right. Because they own and market your book which is a little or they technically own and market your book you also have to market a lot even in the traditional mode absolutely but then there's hybrid which is you you're a professional publisher editor designer etc and, and bring it out into the world and then there's indie where you have to put all those hats on and do it all by yourself which right you thoroughly own your book and you're your own publisher right as diy it's all about you the author you 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 have to wear both hats. You have to wear All the author hat, but you have to wear the business person's hat to make business decisions that are right for your book. And sometimes yeah. it's uncomfortable with the other hat. All the hats, designer hat, um, you know, technical hat. I've, I've just been through it. All the hats. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot to, I was just saying, it's sort of like you, there's words that come up that you don't know what they are, like ASIN versus ISBN. And there's somebody listening to us who knows those differences, and I know you do. <laughs> but when you're sitting with your book that you wanted to bring out the day after tomorrow and you don't know what those things mean, it's a rabbit hole. You have to figure it out. You know? Absolutely is. And, that, and that's then an the ISBN part. is much more expensive than an ASIN, but an ASIN is, and we're all, all this is talking about this little mark on the back of your book. Right. But um, an ASIN is Amazon only, and ISBN is something you need to have if you want to be in a bookstore. And people who um, want to be in a bookstore cannot just do the Amazon only thing because there's not a bookstore in the world who would order a book from Amazon to sell on their shelves, right? I mean, that's, yeah, because why would they? They're going to pay full price and what? Make And maybe have to sell it on clearance a week from now and and take a $5 hit? Not going to (laughs) happen. Not going to, but if they can order your book from a wholesaler, you need A and AISBN, but you also then need to have a relationship with a wholesaler, which is kind of where Brawler Books comes in. Is that We can fit in and take care of that for the author, right? So they don't need to go out and research who's the wholesaler we should be working with and what are the terms I need to establish. You don't have to think about any of that with us. We're willing to share all the detail and and, and I can talk about this all day long. But oh my God, could you? Get Let's the... do that. <laughs> we'll figure. <laughs> our authors focus on what they do best, which is the writing of their book and, and in some cases, the marketing of their book. Um, they take care of that side of it, but we take care of pretty much all the other stuff behind the scenes to make sure that the file they give us on their flash drive, once it's a finished book or it's an audio book or an ebook, it's the best it can be in the best shape it can be for their genre, for their market. And it's it's something that they're truly proud of and happy with. So so it's a collaboration. They're, you know what I mean? They're Very in the so. meetings, they're in there seeing things, they're approving things. They like this, they don't like that. You make changes, they're positioning how they want to be positioned or you tell them this is a much more profitable positioning and they, you know, decide about that, right? Exactly. We're there to Mm -hmm. answer their questions and then point out the questions they didn't know to ask. Yeah. As a first timer, you just don't know what you don't know sometimes, right? 
oh, it's a fourth timer. I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You know, you, oh, and that's the difference with a good hybrid, whether it's us or any other hybrid, you've got an expert in your corner. You've got a team of people behind you that you can go to. And when you don't know something, you can turn around and pick up that phone and ask the question and get an answer that you feel really good about. And you, you're mm -hmm. not spending hours on Google just. Right. And I mean, to, to, to what degree do we all trust Google anyway? I mean, I don't feel a close person. Less and less every day. Yet, right. <laughs> oh, well, but I mean, in general, you just get such diverse information. It's hard to know. Yes. Like you might, for instance, let's say we're in a relationship with a hybrid or a traditional publisher and they say you have to X and you feel like I don't want to X. Right. And Google would say the same thing because that's right. that is the prevailing wisdom. The prevailing sure. wisdom is you have to X. And the thing is, with any of those relationships, you have somebody you either trust or not. You either have somebody that you think, well, right. he knows what he's talking about, or he's done this 400 times, or, and then, you know, if, and you might reconsider why you don't want to X, you know, right. to be right. honest, because, and you wouldn't with Google. End of subject, you just wouldn't. You'd, you'd bull forward with what you had in mind, and it would, right. be, and it would have the impact that the professional foresaw. It would have the negative exactly. impact. Right. Right. As a hybrid, I feel as, as part of my 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 duty, my job, if you will, to make sure that the author understands the decisions in front of them and why they matter and why the choices are what they are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're doing it entirely on your own, you're going to center on one that sounds pretty good and probably run with it. And in the traditional world, they're going to tell you how it's done because they're making an investment in you as an author. And theoretically, they know way more about the market and the genre and what's going to work and what's going to sell than you do. And more mm -hmm. often than not, the authors that go that route. And it's a, a perfectly viable route. Don't misunderstand me. Viable, yeah. um, they'd like to hand that off. They just don't even want to think about it. And they just go ahead, take care of it. Let me know when it's out. I don't so, think you have that option no matter what. Because your book is so precious to you, though. Even in a traditional, you get cover reveals, you get well, sure. galleys and you know all sorts of things that you get to look at and see and, and approve. But I will say, no matter who you're working with, it becomes a collaboration. It should be. It, 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 writers don't necessarily understand that their little work becomes a collaboration, even if only with readers. Readers are going are gonna to sure. envision that book differently from what you wrote, no matter how much detail you put in there. You're right. You know, they're going to come up with their Aunt Marcy for a certain character, and you could not have possibly preconceived that. Right. Right? And it makes it deep and real for that reader. So that's a collaboration that really ended up working, right? For that reader and a different reader sure. envisions their fourth grade teacher or whatever. So all, always your book becomes a collaboration with, if nothing else, the reader. So before that, backing it up, it could be with an agent, an editor, and a right. publisher, and a store buyer. I mean, you know, a buyer for a bookstore still also is a collaborator. They're gonna right. turn to the guy and say, well, if it only had this, and, you know, in early conversations, and then that might change it. Because, sure. yeah, you, you know, need to listen to those other voices, right? As an right. author, you've got a, a pretty strong vision of what you want, but it's important that you stay open minded enough to the experts and the people you bring into your team to, to hear what they're saying, because it may open your eyes to something you hadn't even considered that just makes it take off, that, that makes it so much better than, than where you were kind of at, because you stare at it every day for five years. Uh huh. And you're in the weeds, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's so really tough to separate yourself. Someone needs to see the forest on the map. You know, it's not just the forest for the trees. It's the map. It's that, you know. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, okay. So you're bringing your little baby book in and you're so proud of it and everything. And then you hear somebody say, well, what, what we need to do with this is, and um, it can hurt. Sure. Right. It, it can, can really be. Yeah. So I, I'm just going to give my every always, my always advice when it comes to criticism. And that is, you just let any kind of advice sit right on your shoulder for a minute. You don't have to let it in. You don't have to like be <sighs> puffy or hurt. You don't, have, it's not part of you yet. It's sitting here. And then you sure. look at it and you think, how might this help me? Just affirmatively look at it. Not negatively, like, why are they saying this? What's going on here? No, just the advice, not the person, not the context. How might it help me? And then whatever helps you is allowed in and everything else just goes by the wayside. You that's know. a great approach. It really, that's a, that's a great way of looking at it. Yeah, because it, it helps you um, receive and accept things that you might not have been able to receive and accept, but it also keeps you in control. You are still the sure. still making the decisions of, for this thing. 
for this baby that you put. believe in yourself you know yeah. you believe in yourself enough to write it don't let that fall to the wayside as soon as you decide to move forward and publish it okay so now i don't remember what we've covered so far we took we looked at the spectrum traditional indie traditional hybrid and then self really just diy um, right. and, and you're right in that center this to what hybrid publishers do vary widely from one hybrid to another well, yeah, a hybrid is going to be there to take care of things like cover design, interior design, laying the book out, all the nuts and bolts of ISBNs and barcodes and Library of Congress and all that kind of stuff. And, and make sure that all of those little things are in the right place. They're done properly. They're filed for whatever the case is um, so that you don't have to think about it because on those books where it's not done well, you notice it. On the books where it's done well, you don't even think about it. You just flip right past it. But the right? stuff has to be there. So that's what you're talking about. The front matter is pretty much exactly. That's, called that's the front exactly matter. it. There's and then the, the back of the book is sometimes called the back matter. And what goes Correct. there? What do you what do you have to put there? The back matter can be everything from and about the author and or the illustrator. It can include social media links for a, a speaker who wants to sell books in the back of the room. It's important. And to, meanwhile, people might not think of social links. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, you want that there. Um, what about a teaser that. for your next book? Mm -hmm, book two mm -hmm. the series or the one you know the predecessor you might like this book if you like this one you like that one the other thing that we see obviously in, in back matter is is uh, indexes when appropriate bibliographies extended materials for further information that kind of thing and also we're looking, references uh, or citations those kinds of things right and mm -hmm. we're looking for those opportunities because a lot of times an author might focus so strongly on the content the story their message that they don't even think about the opportunity to add to it and enrich the experience even further for the reader by adding just a little bit extra stuff. Right. And if we see I those mean, opportunities, we bring that to the author's attention and say, you know, it would look really good here. And I had an author just the other day when I, I did a similar thing and she's like, I didn't even think of that. I've been staring at this stuff. That's a great idea. And I can do this and I can do this. And she was off and running at that point. And, and now we know that we've added something. Yeah. I mean, add in, so we just talked about front matter and back matter, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, the, and the author is really very tunnel focused on the message or the writing, the manuscript. Right. A manuscript is not a book is what it boils down to. And so if you have to learn the difference between a manuscript and book and how to do all those things, you're not necessarily going to be so great at that, which, which a hybrid publisher does, but you're also not freed up then to just evangelize for your book. Go out exactly. and talk about it. Yeah. Well, in, in, in those of us who have gone through the process before, whether as an author or a publisher, you start talking about how, well, how do I note my citations and what's the right approach to, to cite this reference or that reference? And we start talking about AP versus the Chicago Manual style. That's the last right. thing in an uh, author. You, that, yeah. that part right there. <laughs> right? But we're there to help with those things. And what's the right way to reference a different version of the Bible, but a different the same verse and things like, you know, just arcane things that come up in the books that we work on. That's what we're there for. So you don't have to think about but that, that. becomes then a professional book instead of a. That's the difference. Right. Right. That's, that's a big difference. Um, it's, a, I mean, it's just like a produced song versus a song in your living room. They're, it's enormous differences and they're all. Yeah, they're both can from... be very good, but just different. And depending on what you're trying to achieve, that professional look and feel can make all the difference in reaching more people with your story or your message. Right, especially when it comes to press, when it comes to even um, just on Amazon sales, you know, like your book yes. cover in particular. Oh my God, do not design your own book cover. People do Canva and it's just never going to look, so no. I don't, because a professional designer is going to, first of all, do a great job, but secondly, probably research like what's going on in that genre or what's going on on bookshelves. Also, they have little type tricks that help people understand like read the whole book right i mean on my book and i'm not really trying to make this commercial for my book but if it works out right. that way i'm okay with it <laughs> <laughs> see this is like right with ease and satisfaction and it's underlined and that's red and this that's like all type that makes those are all type choices that make someone read the whole book read the whole cover I didn't know, I would never have known anything like that, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of little things that come to bear and that's why you, you bring on experts. That's that's why you, you hire a hybrid to get involved with your book because they they fill in that. And, and the, a really good hybrid is gonna be one that, that teaches you along the way. So that if mm -hmm. somebody says, well, why is that in red? And why did you underline that part? You know why that is and why it makes a difference over not doing it. 
Mm -hmm. And for me, that's one of the cool parts of what we do is when an author like, oh, I get it now. Mm -hmm. And they or, apply it down the road to something else, either the back cover or another book entirely, because now it's it's part of a learning process. And that's kind of part of the fun of this, I think, is helping I mean, authors author are snobs. understand that. We're like, sometimes we're little literary nerds and literary snobs. And we don't, <laughs> why is that red? That's that's not grammar. Why is that underlined? <laughs> it's yep. not grammar, you know? <laughs> we're like little grammar police. And so unless somebody came with you came forward with this other idea, whom you trusted and who was it working in your best interest, you could never get there on your own. It just wouldn't happen. I mean, that cover would never have happened coming from me. I would have done a dumb Canva thing. No, I mean, I knew you have to do a professional. You have to do a professional design. That much I know. You have to do a professional edit. That much Absolutely. I know. Absolutely. Yes, right? very much so. Scrub it as best as you can. You know, mm -hmm. Get it cleaned up as much as you can. But I guarantee you're going to hand it over to somebody else who's going to find that one thing that you're like, are you kidding me? Because what it's about just, 15 things with this. I'm not just, sure what you're It's the way it works. And that's, you even, want that. Yeah, you do. You want someone who's still going to say, I'm not getting this. This isn't reading for me. It needs more. I'm not getting this. It's well, in some less. cases, it's the, it's, it's the word spelled correctly, but it's the wrong word. Oh, yeah, that happens. <laughs> there, there, there. Yeah, or just even this like using a big word wrong like succinct and you know you're not using it for what succinct means you're using it for just something you thought it meant <laughs> exactly. and, you know this all comes back to the the goal of trying to get your book out there the best way you can and the most professionally done approach but it and, also comes back to opening to it to a collaboration and the and the strength of a collaboration right like there's a lot of strength in bringing in a team Right. And then it goes to a marketing group and then it goes sure. to the world and that all those phases before it goes to the world, not only just vet the book, but also teach the teach the author um, the kinds of things that make it better or the kinds of things that other people exactly. think about it when they look at this or read that. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. If they're chosen well, they're going to improve upon it with every iteration, with every next set of hands being touching, you know, set of touched hands on it. It's, it's going to just build that book even better. Right. And, and what author doesn't want that? Right? I mean, I think a lot of authors want control. Um, but if you have control, you're probably you're probably narrowing your your possibilities. You're, you know what I mean? Like it's pretty you, likely. Yeah. Unless yeah, you release really control and then it comes back some blended way between what you envision and what they envisioned, you're you're less likely to hit a large audience because the large audience is somewhere between this group and you, you know, they need the, they need right. the extra, yeah? They do, and, and sometimes that can be a clarifying moment for us, and, and it kind of helps form our decision whether or not to take on a project or not. You know, as hybrids, we don't take everything that comes across the transom. Okay. We actually do vet manuscripts. We read them. We try to understand what the author's trying to achieve. I'm, I'm looking as an owner and as a lead salesperson, if you will, I'm looking for a I, what I think is going to be a really engaging and working relationship. And if we okay. find an author like you're describing, this just, just won't, 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 won't. And, and when we present ideas is like, no, 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 then maybe it's not right for us. You know, maybe mm -hmm. another publisher or maybe self-publishing is a better approach. Mm -hmm. um, and that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that the, the story isn't good or valid or what have you. It just means it's not right for us. If I don't okay. feel that we can add something to it and improve upon it and take it somewhere even beyond what the author saw, then we shouldn't be taking the project on as a company. Now, do you do a lot of fiction or do you mostly do um, nonfiction? We do a tremendous amount of nonfiction, but we're branching into fiction as it comes across. So we have and memoir done, being creative nonfiction treated very similar to fiction. And we do a number of memoirs, a lot of memoirs, historical uh, books, historical fiction type books, um, mm -hmm. children's business we've done faith-based books self-help mm -hmm. we've actually done a number of books by young authors sometimes young authors writing ya literature sometimes poetry verse um yeah i can see that i mean teenagers, poetry's so got, got like this big them. an opportunity poetry publishing is about this big it's an opportunity tough. so if you really have a strong sense that your public that your poetry has to get out there um you have to put it out there you know you have to do it you're absolutely right. It's a stepping yeah. stone to something else at that point. And that doesn't, and, and that's a very valid reason for releasing the book, even if it doesn't break bestseller status on Amazon. 
right? But I mean, no. just just because somebody says no, you're not you're not dead in the water, no. right? I mean, they publish so few po poets, and yet there's a lot of people who are doing brilliant poetry. And Absolutely. then you could turn it into songs, and then they they really make money. There's a lot of other. <laughs> There's a lot of things that can go. And, and it's important for the author to understand why they're writing. And it's not just get a book out. What, what's your real goal? Are you trying to reach people? Are you trying to help people understand they're not the only one dealing with this? Are you trying to tell mm -hmm. somebody how to build a publishing empire? I don't know what it is, but it's important to understand that because that helps you in more ways than you realize at the outset. But it also helps your partners understand what your goals are and they start to make the right decisions to get you there. Clarity helps enormously. And if you have a clear vision, great. If you don't have a clear vision, somebody mirroring you and reflecting back, you can start to clarify it together. Oh, and sure. not everybody has really great clarifying skills, but that doesn't mean you don't need clarity. <laughs> Very true. You still need to unmuddy those waters and understand what you, know, what you have in mind. The podcast will be back in less than a minute. Writers, does this ever happen to you? You can't write, though you try and try. Whoa! Writer's block just knocks you down. It doesn't have to be so fling and fling and hard. Join the Mighty Writers Club. We write together up to five days a week. We have a coaching and creativity training two times a month. You get your writing done in a community. We're with you all the way. Act now. Join us before you end up like her. Be mighty. The Mighty Writers Club. Find us at go.decodingcreativity.com slash mighty. So let's just look at those three, um, those three models, indie, right. hybrid, traditional, and including the small pubs. Financially, how do they net out? Sure. Like if you go self, you take on all your expenses, but you own your book and you make however much you make per book. Exactly. You make as much as you put into it at that point, right? It's entirely on you. And and part of the, the challenge there is not only is is, is is the cost of the design or the cost of the uh, the illustrator or the interior designer or what have you, mm -hmm. it's the cost of mistakes made that didn't need to be made. Oh, you're hurting my heart. Like what, David? <laughs> right? So there, there's a little bit of that there too. With hybrid- Like everybody has a little fear in their stomach now. Did I make that mistake? You know, but we talked about a couple of those. Um, just, well, for instance, People think um, Amazon can sell everywhere. But if you don't have a wholesale relationship, which you may or may not be interested in personally as, you know, achieving, but if you don't have your book in, in with a wholesaler, you're not going to have any bookstore, um, any bookstore activity. Well, exactly. You can I mean, fine without bookstore activity, but, you know. Um, well, you know, there's a lot to be said for Amazon. You know, it, you know we, we balk about it sometimes and we're frustrated by them you know, yeah, buying up and, eat, and destroying the small bookstores. But the reality is, as an author, that's where you're going to go with your book because they got a reach that nobody subject. can touch. End of subject. You need the platform of a big so book. It's yeah. just a piece of what you're doing. And I don't think you should rely wholly on it, right? If you go with the wholesaler who can get it on Amazon, but also Barnes and Noble and your corner bookstore and universities and institutions across the country and overseas, that's a whole new ball of wax. And now your reach just expanded globally. In right, and they the understand. But I mean, from, so if you want to be in a bookstore, you must get to a wholesaler. So you can do that on your own. But you can do a little bit of that on your own from companies like Ingram Spark. Right. They can help you do that kind of thing because they're Ingram Spark is the little bitty baby of Ingram. And Ingram's the biggest wholesaler in the country with overseas reach as yeah, well. I didn't even know that. Yeah, Ingram, Ingram Spark is, the small, is and Ingram is the parent. Ingram Spark is Ingram Spark is for those who have published before. Remember when Create Space was around on Amazon? It's now called KDP, which is kind of confusing because we always were taught that was the ebook side of it, but now it's also print. Used to be uh, Book Surge. Go yes. back a ways, David. Oh, now you're showing. <laughs> Uh -huh. Ingram Spark is is similar to that in many respects. The biggest difference, however, is that Ingram Spark not only hits Amazon, but they had all those others, whereas Amazon hits Amazon. It, yes, and it would like you to be exclusive to Amazon. Sure, they did. Yeah, so, I mean you can click that. That's that how box. they make their money. That's that's mm -hmm. why that's why Mr. Jeff has the money he has. Uh, don't talk about him. So uh, in the hybrid world, they're typically going to get you tied up and connected with Ingram through their relationship. So I do that for our authors. Okay. Make sure that our authors have their titles listed in the right way with the right returns policy, the right wholesale discount, all the right terms and conditions that as an independent author, you didn't even 
think to ask a question about right. that's every day for us. We just know what needs to be there and we're going to make sure it's there for your book. Mm -hmm. The traditional publisher obviously they've got that reach, right? They built in, people know who Penguin is and right. they've got all the trade relationships. The right. biggest difference there is with, with a Penguin, they're going to have an active sales force out there hitting the streets, talking to bookstores and that kind of thing. From there down to the hybrids, it depends on the publisher involved. A lot of those publishers do have active relationships with companies that are outbound selling but it changes the nature of the investment for the author as well to have that kind of resource at their disposal. Okay, so uh, you actually lost me a little bit. So I know that traditional okay. publishers have a sales force. And they have they, a sales force as well as that wholesale distribution. They have both. So they go out and they talk to the rep for Barnes & Noble representing exactly. national coverage or whatever. Sure. And they hand sell that book. This book is on our exactly. list Exactly, that's how the books go straight to that books. bookstore for a release day event. And yeah, so, and the, and you know, the store buys X number and returns X number. Right. They do returns. Um, so, so a hybrid doesn't have the sales force is what you're saying. They can or they cannot. Some do, some don't. And, and if you, if they do, you're likely paying extra for that as well. You're probably, yeah, it's probably a bigger investment at that point because there's got to be mm -hmm. an offset somewhere, right? Right. And the thing is your sales force is out there, but without the random penguin house, Random the house cache penguin behind, behind it, it or something. Yeah. Right. They're not likely to just buy into your book from XYZ. As a first time author, it's a tough road. Yes. Uh -huh. Very much so. With, I mean, as a first time author, it's a tough road from a big publisher, but the sure. big publisher is batting for you. And that's already exactly. a big deal. Right. Right. And some okay. topics, you know, some things like memoirs don't typically get picked up that often by traditionals. It, they weren't having a moment, but I think it's eclipsed, right? I think it's yes. it's already, yeah. And but, yet memoirs okay. are some of the best reading out there, frankly. And we do a tremendous number of them. We built processes around them because those kinds of stories, there's nothing like it feeling like you're in the shoes of somebody else going through the things that they experienced. Uh -huh. I think there's a lot of people who love memoirs too. I mean, it's a genre that, but I think traditional publishers are shying from memoirs that aren't celebrity-based or you know, just incredible story based at the very exactly. least. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things that comes into play along a similar vein with hybrid versus traditional is the time frame involved. You know, we can publish a book from an edited manuscript and have it out there in as little as 60 to 90 days. For, you know, oh, like I a know. Business that is author. enormous. Right. That's, and that's, I mean, we're, we're moving, we're hustling at that point. But if we've got a, an author or a business person trying to hit a, a conference and that kind of thing, we'll jump through those hoops and make that kind of thing happen. If you bring that up with a traditional, they're going to laugh you out the building. Oh, no. It's you just, said three years, right? And well, two or one and a half. But yeah, there's a long wait. It's a Part long That road, is long selling road. in. They have to sell your book inter internally. Exactly. To the there's a tremendous end. amount of research there. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But and, you uh, just have to decide the model that's right for you as an author. But what about just like I was saying financially, like if you are in a traditional, you might get an advance. Um, and usually it's less than the fantastical advanced numbers that people think. <laughs> <laughs> the Google will tell you. Yeah, um, it, it is an advance. It's an advance against sales. Uh, exactly. So you have and to earn out of that advance before you start getting royalties. Right. right? You, you've got to earn. They're making an investment in you as an author saying, we think she's going to sell $10,000 worth of books. So we'll say, give her a they check. Also, guess, they, they're making a guess. This is a book yes. that I think will send, sell 10,000 books. Right. And if it's going to sell 10,000 books, I will advance her $10,000. Because the payout's about a dollar a book. So as well, soon as you sold 11,000 books, you start to get that dollar a book royalty. You get that royalty. And the royalty right. rate itself is a percentage. A uh, soft cover book in the traditional world is somewhere between 5 and 7%. Oh, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the hybrid world, the minimum bar is it starts at about 50%. Oh, so that's an up. enormous difference. Yeah. Right. In our world, our company offers a 65% rate because we it's okay. just, that's our approach to working with our authors. Obviously, the difference in our world is you're paying us to do some of those services, traditional or you're not. Right. But again, for some folks and some authors and some titles, that's a much better model because you're earning a royalty with us from day one, mm -hmm. not waiting to sell 11,000 copies of your book to get to that point to start earning right. a royalty. So, And I mean, a $10,000 royal advance may seem exciting, but you've been writing that book probably two years. You know what I mean? It's not like good pay. <laughs> no. 
Nope. We're not in it for the money usually. That doesn't mean nope. we wouldn't like to make money. <laughs> Never so, met a dollar. It's I didn't. another way of looking at the three different types, of the, the main types of publishing. So if you own your book and you're publishing it all by yourself, you're your own publisher, DIY, right. as you call it, um, or self-publishing. In the end, you get everything that Amazon doesn't take. But Amazon takes 35, just by the way. So right. you're making something like, it's not a royalty, it's just a cut. They what you get left. It. Yeah, it's a cut, basically. You get, you know, so you get six, 65% after the Amazon cut. But your book royalties are after the Amazon cut. Is that true or am I getting it? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, 65% that's just, of the net. Of the so, net, because it's right. just like a store. A store has got 100% markup. That's always going to be there. You know, right. And when you approach a store, they're going to ask you for what your wholesale discount is and things like that, because that's how, that's how a store makes money on your book. They're going to say, oh, you want us to sell this at $19.99? Well, for us to do that, we got to buy it for no more than $12. Right. They're going to want at least a 40% break because that's where they make their money. So it's not 100, it's 40 or 50. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I had to select those things when I was going through mine. And that's one of the things that we do, right? We sort those right. things out. You don't out. know from, yeah. It's just like- We lay know. all that out for our authors. We explain it to them and walk them through the numbers until it starts to make sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because those things affect how your book will go. Absolutely. Bookstore and it's owners, important you understand that on the front end. Right. Because bookstore owners, you know, have to calculate and they have two possible memoirs they don't even know them so why wouldn't they go with the one that has terms that they understand you know exactly right. you're absolutely right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so we went through that financially speaking um you, you still on your own publishing with brawler or not i mean not publishing but marketing or what really like if i'm about to um, launch do you guys have like a template i can use or a launch plan or what happens exactly depending on what the author is trying to achieve with their book whether it's a business person or it's a children's book or it's a, a faith-based book whatever the case is we have a number of things that we're going to present to the author as options for how to get it out there how to spread the word you know we encourage a lot of our authors to do pre-sale campaigns cool. announce it on social media do cover reveals and then send people with a, a shortened link to our bookstore where we mm -hmm. start to to gather those sales for them so that while their book's still being printed, we're already selling it for them and, and taking care of print. all of that yeah. stuff for them. So they don't need to build their own e-commerce site, which they would if they were doing it on their own. Right. right. We take care of all of that. We manage because that. If you're sending them to a publisher, there's just so much more, if you're going to call it prestige or I don't know, but there's just so much more to it when there you is. can, yeah. When you can send them to a publishing page and as you know, there's, there's gravitas there, you know, there is. there's there, and, and it, it does add a little bit of credibility too, right? It, well, it also implies that people, more people have been, it goes back to collaboration. I trust this book because any number of people now have looked at it and are backing it. Sure. It's, it's also just, it's credibility and, and sort of implied endorsement, you know, like yeah. it's positioned as, yeah. So well, I send them yeah, to we, Brawler books and they buy my, they pre-order my book, right? Right. And then do they get, what if I want them to get um, an extra chapter or a gift of some sort? Does that- We can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Cool. We, because, we, because we control that channel, right? It's ours. Yeah. We do those things. We do sign book plates. We do bookmark. We do add-ins. We do little things, tchotchkes, whatever the case is. We can work those things out and control that. And we actually become almost like a fulfillment house at that point for the author doing mm -hmm. all of that pick pack and stuff and getting it out and and the author doesn't have to think about any of it just know that it they don't out. have to have this in their office at all times ready to go <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we can be very with... creative with what we're doing here and we have i mean their their desk is not to be cluttered with bookmarks <laughs> i'm my own everything of course i'm um, right exactly. now i have done everything i have done traditional i've not done hybrid i've done traditional i guess i've done hybrid it didn't used to be called that um, I've had a publisher bring out a book in okay. 2014, but I don't think it was called hybrid then. Um, but you, you know, you paid for it, and they did all sorts of. They did all the interior and the it design. Sounds like, kind of like a service company, which is 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 one more flavor in the spectrum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? They do certain pieces of it for you, and that's that's very valid approach as well. Okay, so okay, so and we talked a little bit about the finances. If I own my book and sell it on Amazon, I get 65 percent straight up. And it does, it gets direct deposited into my account right. quarterly, right? So, right. Um, and then if I if I come with a brawler books, um, mm -hmm. the net is 65% same. 
And then I share that with you, I get 65% of that. But hopefully my sales are enhanced by the fact that we've done all these things. We've done all those other things, right? You've got experts. Especially the pre-sale. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're doing all those kinds of things. We're looking for some opportunities. Um, much like a traditional publisher, we're not actively looking for marketing opportunities year after year for our authors. We, we just can't do it. And no. frankly, they're not doing it either. No, they have a, your, your book is worth six weeks to them. And then it's, then it's pulped almost. It's you know, it's shiny object. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the bookstore themselves basically have six weeks. Your book has a six week shelf life in, in traditional publishing. Unless it really does well, and then it then it continues. But otherwise, if it's right. not doing seemingly well, then it's six weeks. Well, and one of the other things that we enter a lot with our authors, you know, you mentioned collaborative earlier, and it, it, collaborative is a tremendously important word in our world here. Mm-hmm. We collaborate with our authors for the long term, not mm-hmm. just at release, not just during the process, but years past that initial release, whether they've got a new book or not. They know they can come to us with questions, ideas. Should I be doing an audio book? I heard Brawler Books does audio books. You know, uh, there's a number of things and we're there to kind of walk them through it regardless of what the answer is. I mean, sometimes we've had people come to us and say, I, I really need to do this for my book. And I've talked them out of it because it just didn't make sense. And I know that sounds completely or, contrary. What's that? Well, how would it not make sense financially or? What? Financially, uh, where the book was at in its life cycle. Um Sometimes a, a, an audio book, maybe just a wild thing for, you know, an audio book for a, a very short children's book, maybe it just doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, right. There's certain things that just don't work. We've had people ask us for hardcover versions of books that just, it, it really didn't jive. It didn't mm-hmm. buy. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I know that sounds a little contrary because sure, I could, I could close another deal and we bring you're more business to the door. is what you're saying. In the end, yeah. you're not a printer. You're not just like, yes. No. But yes. We're, we're not just about yeah. trying to make a buck. Right. I mean, we're trying to do what's right by our authors, and sometimes it's telling them no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the reason you would do an audio book is what? Why would you do an audio book? Like, what uh, are the, the good reasons? The, the good reasons are it's another way to reach your audience, assuming your audience consumes their content that way. Yeah, you never know who, like, if they're a commuter, if they're a commute reader, they want sure. to listen. If their mothers are, a lot of them are doing... Um, Sure. Maybe it's for salespeople, right? Mm Salespeople on the go. Sure. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm, It it mm -hmm. just really kind of depends on the audience. My eyes are getting worse. I mean, you know, I haven't switched to audio, but I've switched to, you know, screens because I really have a hard time reading a regular page. It's not because I'm OLD. It's just is. It just is. (laughs) (laughs) But at any rate... (laughs) Well, and that's what you want is somebody who's not afraid to tell you what's right or wrong for your book, right? It's another sounding board. In the end, you, the author, have the final say so. It's your book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it, but, but you do want to, you, you're working with someone for their expertise. That's right. And so you don't want to shun their expertise. You want to at least give it safe harbor. Exactly. To contemplate it, and right? by the same token, you want, you, you, you just don't want somebody saying yes all the time. Mm-hmm. I like that though. Hey, like when someone says yes all the time. <laughs> but I hear you. I mean, it boils down to you're not a printer. You know, Correct. if you were a printer, it would just be like, okay, files are good, bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Call Upside you in five down, days. don't care. <laughs> yeah. I have had bad printing jobs. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm cool. I think I'm cool with a lot of things that we're talking about. And I understand, I really do see the financial value of a hybrid because it's not that dissimilar from what you get from Amazon in terms of per book ultimately, but it is um, a lot of things that it's not just a safety net because it is a safety net. All sorts of things get considered that you don't have to consider, you know, by professionals, but it's also all of that brain, all that brain power that goes into learning new words. You know, like when you first buy your house, you have to learn all sorts of new words. Well, sure. You know, if you go into Home Depot and you're like, no, it's not the uppy part, it's the flatty part of the step, you know, <laughs> you're not well, going to get exactly. very far. I mean, you, you can pull up YouTube videos on plumbing and electrical all day long. That doesn't mean I should be doing any of that, right? You should get an expert in to help you with those things that you don't know to even look for online. Yeah, right? I always and say it's like if you're... expertise, that's where we bring that real value in, I hope. I, that's that's what a, really I mean, I feel like if you're about to have a baby and you drive to the hospital, you're not going to have the baby in the in the parking lot. You know what I mean? Like you're ready. It's yours. You have it. Go get the help you need to make it a really uh, safe and great experience. 
So, I mean, for me, it's part, it's, I'm hearing things I didn't know before and it's really cool to talk to you about it. So anyway, okay. I think I've learned a lot about hybrid. I've asked all the questions I want. I hope I'm answering some questions for our listeners. I can't, I can't be sure, but, <laughs> but, um, but I've learned a lot. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm already around. I'm always around for questions. So people can always reach out. Cool. Thanks very much for being with me. I so sure, appreciate it. You. I think we really learned a lot. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's always fun. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe and tell your friends. What did you learn today? What was your takeaway? What are you going to do today? Put it in the comments. We all want to know. Meanwhile, get my book, Write Without the Fight. You want to master your creative process so you can write with more ease and satisfaction. The links are all in the description box. Join us, because writers are the best weirdos.